Welcome to Faith in Vegas, presented by KEEN TV 17, a program to inspire and inform our viewers about the unique community in which we live. Hello and welcome to Faith in Vegas. I'm your host, David Lee. Today's guest, we have Gary Ward, also known as G. Bless. But before we get into the interview, I want to show you a quick video, who he is, what he's all about, and what he can do. Check it out. Sometimes in life, you fall down. But that don't mean you gotta stay there. You gotta, yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta bounce back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you mind if I testify? I'm only standing my own trial. I confess I was buck wild. Gang signs and black and miles. Wanna be with the OGs. Blazed up when I was 13. Self destruction in full swing. No bounce in my self esteem. Another night on these chicken wings. Gangs rapping my tape deck. Prey set in its own trap. No books in my backpack. Do you know where your daddy at? No discipline, no common sense. Those bullets I was dodging. He feel my emotions. You gotta break your silence. Tell the truth, be honest. The only way you get. Set free when you let go of that burden, start moving your shoulders, hands start to racing. That's right, you bouncing. Peace of mind with your peace of mind. Moving up towards that percent. I'm walking just like him. We're beneath my wings. Yeah, the only way you can go is up. Jumped up and I feel the rush. Extra pep in my giddy up. Automatic, I'm off the clutch. Real smooth, I can't stop the bus.
Hello and welcome to Faith in Vegas. I'm your host, David Lee. Today we have a special guest, Gary Ward, a.k.a. G-Bless. Thank you for How being you doing? on the show. How you doing, sir? Good, good. What's been going on, man? Been busy, man. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of performances, a lot of ministry, a lot of good things going on. Husband, yeah, dad, yeah. all that good stuff, you know? Right on. Yes, sir. Congrats. How long have you been married? It will be 13 years this year. Wow. You know, so I had to do that. I had to round about and come bring it back. Man, when it's been that long, you just, you know, yeah, 13 years. 13 years. 13 years. Now, the last time we spoke, or I don't know if we really spoke, we we, we worked on television together. Yeah. Uh, we were working out. Yeah, Camp Rhino, and you threw up. <laughs> hey, I was the winner. I, I won that. I don't know, man. Just because you throw up, that doesn't make you a winner. You know what I mean? Like, I don't get that, man. I guess it's like a, a, a rite of passage or a badge of honor in some places. Like, yeah. oh, he threw yeah. up. You're one of us. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, all right. So, no, I don't get in? No? I don't? All right. <laughs> so, um, now that you're here on, on, on this show, Faith in Vegas, I yeah. guess I, I want to learn a little bit more about your rap side, a little bit more of the things that you went through, some of the uh, struggles, struggles you faced and still maybe do face okay. today. So I guess before we get into that, where are you originally from and what brought you to Las Vegas? Originally from uh, Detroit, Michigan and Brought me to Las Vegas as the man upstairs. This wasn't, you know, my plan. I wasn't planning on, you know, coming to Vegas. It wasn't on no list. It was just nowhere near on the radar. You know, that's how you know it's a God thing or that's a, it's a God move because it's just one of those things you don't see coming. And you're pretty much either obedient to, you know, what he's unctioning you to do or either, you know, you're like, nah, you know, I can't do that or you get scared and, you know, and allow fear to paralyze you and don't move on that. But it's literally been one of the best things that, that, that I could have done is just been obedient, just listening to God. I just knew. And, you know, I told my wife, I said, if it's, if it's meant to be, let's pray on it. And, you know, God will have to just make it like to where it's just like literally like everything is just clicking and everything is just smooth. And when I say everything yeah. went smooth, everything was smooth. And normally you're like, man, something had to go yeah. wrong. Nothing went wrong. Wow. And we drove here, too. So, I mean, you would think there's so many variables in, in, in those instances. And then my son was, like, pretty much almost like a newborn. So, so many different things that could have went wrong yeah. that didn't. We first drove out from Michigan. It was a blizzard. We got through the blizzard. Once we got through the blizzard, oh, man, it was smooth sailing. The further south that we, that we got, mm. man, the, you know, the sun was shining and it was just smooth sailing. My son was in the back. Uh, like I said, practically a newborn. No fussy cries, no yeah. crazy diapers, you know what I mean? Like anything that could have went wrong, no flat tires, no arguments, you know, like you should have turned left, you know, like none of it. Wow. Just smooth. That's a road trip dream come true. Literally. Great music, good food, calm babies. Yeah. Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Now I, I want to ask you about your 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 uh, your lyrics. Um, mm -hmm. What what inspires your lyrics? A lot of little bit of everything. I could watch a movie and get lyrics, you know, from a movie. I'm not an avid reader. I'm not a you know, give me a book and and some scones and tea or coffee yeah. and read a book. I'm just not that dude. I just can't get through a book. I fall asleep when I read books. So documentaries, movies, interaction with people. Yeah. I'm a people watcher. Just different things, you know, that just inspire me. You know, news. Like, I, I just like the realistic point of view of life. Mm -hmm. And I tend to write from that standpoint. You know, you got a lot of rappers who pride themselves on punchlines and, yeah. you know, metaphors and all that. That's cool. You know, I can do all of that. But I just kind of like the real interaction of a song. Like, taking it and literally, like giving it this substance to where it's like it can connect with you. So that's kind of mm -hmm. like my baseline for what I do music. I just like the connection aspect of, of lyricism. Wow, man. Hey, you know what? We got to take a quick break right now. I want to hear more about that. We'll be right back with G Bless on Faith in Vegas. See you guys in a bit. 
Sat back and wrote this for my kid folk Who really won't change set of gold ropes All the way back home, can you hear me though? Back signals in the air, all these black nights Hit you, hit you in the face, see that white light Home girls too easy just to bang pow Break floor, don't do it, just slow it down Everybody got beat, that's a mad cow Ricochet, click, blow, that's a dead town Hey, we're back here with Faith in Vegas. Again, I'm still David Lee. This is still G Blessed. Uh, G Blessed, how'd you come up with G Blessed? Odd story. This was a time in my life where, you know, I think a lot of people go through the club phase. Mm -hmm. I was in the club phase of life. You know, my friend uh, Jason Hudson, my brother, good friend, he... We both were just clubbing, you know, it was just one of those moments in time you turn 20, 21 years old, it's like club time. So we're clubbing, going to club to club. And I was just still in that transitional phase of, you know, phase of life, street life, you know, and then I was like kind of in the church a little bit, but not all the way, you know, so it was a little bit of back and forth, you know, it wasn't quite there yet. And I don't know how, man, we're just sitting there, we're just sitting around in my room, we're just chilling. And he goes, you should call yourself G Blessed. I'm like, what? Like, have one of those weird, like, what? Like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, you should call yourself G Bless. I'm like, grab a piece of paper, write it down. Because you, first you got to look at it. You know, you got to look at how you're going to autograph stuff. You automatically assume you're going to do autographs. Yeah. Like, get a piece of paper, G-B-L-E-S-S. -S. And I'm like, ew, I don't like that. Mistakenly so, I write G-B-L-E-S-T. Somehow... My uh, Detroit education thought that I was spelling it correctly with the T on the end. <laughs> I literally thought I was like, oh, yeah, this is money right here. I like how this looks on the paper. Yeah. Thus, you see my hat. Yeah. You know, and I wrote it on a piece of paper. I liked the way it looked with the T on it. And I, it just stuck from there. And it pretty much was, you know, like, man, that mo one of those moments where it just like you're friend says something that you just get up and just be like yeah yeah that works and literally from that moment on i was g blessed i had a bunch of horrible rap names uh throughout my you know uh name career. some Na name some i want to hear them I, all right I, I got it i have no problem naming them they're pretty funny <laughs> my first one when i was 10 years old because i put it in a rap i called myself g man p um <laughs> Go. i don't I, and uh it was g man p Infrared, I was infrared, I was furious G, and then once I was a, a mythical, uh, what is it like, Greek mythological, myth, how you say it? Mythological? Myth yeah, something like that. Teenage Mutant Mythological <laughs> Greek. <laughs> but I was, uh, all of my friends, it was a group named Men of Myth, and it was like Poseidon, Zeus, and Ares, and like, we all like, okay, everybody else that, we're like the, the the Wu Tang clan of our city or whatever. So we all needed these mythological names or whatever. So I was Apollo. You know, I I had that I took upon that name, wow. you know, for a little while. So a lot of names, man, going through the you know, if you're a rapper and you, you know, have a long career, you done went through names. You done went through a phase of just like finding out what your true identity is when it comes to you being an MC. So yeah. Wow. Boom, there it is. G Man P. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what you say to someone who's doing the dance. Yeah. <laughs> G Man, come on, the bathroom's right there. <laughs> Very cool. So, why'd you choose Christian rap over mainstream rap? It wasn't so much that I chose it, it was just like a general like sense of like, you know, God just you know, speaking to my heart and the man and the character, you know, that, that you know, he wanted me to be like what he is molding me, you know. So it wasn't like, you know, I want to be a Christian rapper because I battled with that for a long time because I'm like, am I supposed to, because when I was listening to Christian rap, I was turned off by it, you know, in the earlier years because I didn't, I didn't like the, just the Jesus is the, is the way and the Jesus and the Malachi's and the, you know, just the Bible verses. I'm like, man, I got so much more to say. Like, so am I wrong for feeling the way that I'm feeling in a long time, I just wrestled with that notion, like, you know, like, man, what is a Christian rapper? You know, like, how am I supposed to, like, you know, be an MC and like lyrics and like to write about this and that and, and you know, uh, not forsake God and, you know, what I do. So pretty much I was asleep. It's crazy. Got a revelation watching a, a television network and this 
preacher, I don't know, I woke up out of my sleep and he was like, the music is to inspire. And I was yeah. like, whoa. You know, because I was in that trenches of just battling, like, what am I supposed to do, God? Like, how am I supposed to write this? So pretty much, man, write music that's going to inspire people, whether they go to church or they don't. Write music that's, that's going to inspire. And that's my, that's my goal. That's my mission when I write music. Wow. Huh. So are there a lot of outlets for Christian rappers in Las Vegas? There are. There are a few outlets here. Uh, you have uh, His Hop. You have uh, Speak Life Radio, you have the Triple G Show, you have Spit'em Forums. Uh, it's, a, it's a few of them that's out there, you know, if, if, you know, the local artists and they're looking for those uh, connections of uh, wanting to know where the uh, other hip-hop Christian artists here in uh, Vegas, those are a few, just to, just mm -hmm. to name the least. Like, you, you mentioned, you were talking about... Um, 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 um struggling between Christian and mainstream. Um, you ever feel like, you ever feel tempted to, to cross the line a little bit with your lyrics? Oh, all the time, man. You know, you hear all the turn up songs and everybody get excited to the music and you see what, you know, all these mainstream artists are doing. So it's real easy to get tempted to want to write those type of songs or not so much as go as far as they would go, but just almost like um, the old school artists would call it, you know, biting you know, like pretty much mimicking what somebody else is doing. And mm -hmm. that's the current culture of hip hop now. It doesn't matter who created the style. If it's popular, then pretty much another artist will just jump on and just do the exact same thing another artist is doing is just their form of it. Yeah. And, you know, when you see people dancing and dabbing and whipping and all this other stuff going on, you're like, man, they, man, like, I, I need to make a song like that. I yeah. want to, somebody to do one of those to my songs, you know, they ain't get one of them dabs in there or something <laughs> like that, you know. But you got to stay focused on what, you know, you're true to and what you're called to do and not get caught up in that. You know, and just, you know, let them have it, you know, for the ones that want to do that. But for me, it's about originality and creativity. Right on, right on. And yes. on that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take another quick break. Please stick around. There's more of G Bless coming back. I'll see you next time after the commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> Sat back and wrote this for my kid folk Who really won't change that the coke ropes All the way back home, can you hear me though? Back signals in the air, all these black nights Hit you, hit you in the face, see that white light Home girls too easy, just a bang pow Break floor, don't do it, just slow it down Everybody got beat, that's a mad cow Ricochet, click, blow, that's a dead town Round blue, loose blouse, making loud sounds Plus sign on the dial, put your plans down Call let the baby kick, that's a round house See some of those states gon' take place just while still placed us a clean slate. And we're here. Still here. Still here. We Very didn't still here. We didn't go anywhere. No, no. No. But you didn't either. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, Gary, we were talking about um, crossing the line and stuff. So I got to ask you if, if Atlantic Records, uh, or what's a good record company? I was like Interscope. Or Interscope? If Interscope Records called you and said, we're willing to give you a seven million dollar contract, mm. but your CD has to have the label that says parental advisory on it. Meaning, I would have to write, con you know, they would be saying to me, "You have to write explicit lyrics." Yes, that's a seven million dollar check that I would not be cashing. Oh wow, wow! I mean, it's it's bigger. It's bigger yeah. than the. I mean, the money sounds great. The money would be great, but you know, it's how I would feel. I wouldn't mm -hmm. feel authentic in doing something like that. And like I said before, it's about the connection. You you can get that seven million dollars and you know be all over the world and be gone tomorrow. I yeah. mean, it's it's how music is. Mm -hmm. If you want to have longevity. I feel like you have to sacrifice. You have to be willing to sacrifice some things, whether it's money, whether it's fame. It's a lot of different things that that should come before all yeah. of that, before you even think about signing a deal or getting a check for $7 million. Like, I know most people are like, man, are you crazy? Yeah. Like seven, that's $7 million. Do you know what I can do with $7 million? But what's the point of having $7 million and then me trying to go back and help a generation or help a group of kids and my message doesn't reflect what I'm trying to tell them to do the right thing. 
But man, we listen to your song and your CD and it says this. And you sitting here trying to tell me to go to school and love God, all of the above. So it it just wouldn't make any sense for me. And then plus my name is G Bless. Like yeah. I would have to change I would have to go through another name change. <laughs> wouldn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> G Man P would have to make a re a comeback. Like literally, like, you know, like literally that literally would have to come <laughs> out of retirement or something like that in order for me to fit the the criteria of what they want me to do for the seven million dollars. <laughs> So where do you think you're going with your with your uh, music career? I think musically, I'm just continuing to evolve. You know, being an independent artist, you know, I'm learning a lot more about the business, and I feel like that part to me is 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 way more important than just signing your name to a contract. You see so many people, and you hear so many horror stories of people signing record deals and their dreams just becoming a reality, and then 15 seconds of fame and it, they're nowhere to be found. I don't want to be that type of artist. I want to be the type of artist that, that lasts the test of time to where people can find my music and still go back to the music and listen to it and it's timeless. So that's yeah. my approach. I want to create records to where there are moments in your life to where it's the playlist and the soundtrack of your life. In this moment, I remember listening to G Bless song during this time and I was going through this and it got me through this situation or seeing him perform and he did a certain type of song that I liked so much, man, it just brought tears to my eyes and, or the stories I hear about people being in prison yeah. and they seeing me perform, you know, and they're just like, bro, I'm, I just dropped all my gang ties, you know, after I heard your story, you know, through your rap lyrics. And I'm like, yeah. that, that yeah. right there is priceless. Yeah. You can't put a price tag on that, you know? That's true. You cannot put a price tag on anything like that. When you hear a, a gang leader, it wasn't just anybody, but like a gang leader told me that. Yo, I dropped all, I dropped my affiliation mm -hmm. when you did that song, Relentless. And you told your life story. It changed my life. You know, can't write a check for that. That's true. I gotta ask you then, um, do you think that where you're going, where, where you want to go with your, your, uh, your, I keep saying comedy, I'm a comedian. <laughs> well, your music career. Yeah. Uh, do you think that's in line with where God wants you to go with your music career? I believe so. I believe he wants me to continue to stay focused on him and he'll do the rest. You know, I was, it was a time in life where I was just so ambitious and it was for all the wrong reasons. I just wanted to get to my future. God, what's my destiny? God, record deal. I need, you know, I want this, I want this. You know, I'm just tugging at him and asking him for all this stuff. And, you know, you miss a lot of things in life when you're trying to hurry up and, you know, get ahead of the process. If you just stay with, you know, God's plan and, you know, and, and you know, enjoy the process and will, be willing to endure, you know, He'll open all those doors for you. You just have to stay focused on what he's calling you to do. Work on your character. Work on yourself. And if you're a husband and a father, focus on raising your children, your marriage, and being a, a leader here before you can go out into the world and spread yourself thin and give your heart away to the people. First, you got to always make sure home is 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 pretty much the, the, the standard of what, you know what I'm saying, who you are. When the people see me, they need to have a sense of, you know, my family and, and, yeah. and, and my wife and all of that needs to be like in my music. It needs to be in me so that they're not they're not um, they're not looking at me like, oh, man, this dude is just, you know, just free and just out here just doing his thing. Like, yeah. no, I'm a representation of my family, a representation of God. So I just pretty much want to convey that message through the song so you can connect to that and then understand why I am the way that I am. Amen. Oh man, that was awesome. Thank you, thank you. And you guys heard it just now from G Bless. Thank you guys for watching the show. Thank you G Bless for yes, being sir. on the show. Anytime, man. All right, and I'll see you guys next time. Aloha. Hey everybody, thank you again for tuning in and watching Faith in Vegas. Also, special mahalo to Gary Ward. You guys know him as G Bless. Until next time, aloha. Thanks for watching Faith in Vegas, a presentation of KEEN TV 17. We hope you've enjoyed today's program and we'd love to hear your comments and suggestions for the show. You can contact KEEN TV 17 at the address on the screen.